The state of Texas lives, exists in the national economy, and, and the national economy exists within the global economy. So we all breathe the same oxygen, and so it affects us all. Um, and really what we're going through, I think, right now is, you know, we, we have normal business cycles. So we have recession recovery, recession recovery that happens every several to seven years, let's say, and we're all used to those. And then there are longer uh, wave, if you will, kind of longer sine wave cycles that are debt cycles. And so we have been, the Western economies in the world have been levering up, have been borrowing more and more and more for about the past 30 years. And ultimately you reach a capacity where you have to begin to delever or pay down debt. Well, economies grow magnificently when, when, uh, when leverage is being added because economies are driven by spending and you can get money to spend from two sources. You can earn it or you can borrow it. So when you're borrowing money, economies tend to be growing, everything looks great, profits are up, jobs are up, and so forth. And then ultimately when you reach that kind of nadir and, uh, and can't borrow any longer, um, you have to start paying it back. So rather than spending money, you're using money to take down debt. And that is a real headwind for an economy. And so we are currently in a deleveraging cycle where the Western economies of the world are having to start addressing their debt and reducing it so less money is being spent, economies aren't growing. And the global economy is pretty flat right now, kind of sideways, as is the U.S. economy. Um, very slow growth. And with unemployment high, a slow growing economy doesn't put people back to work. We're about a 70% consumer-led economy. 70% of our GDP is a product of various types of consumer spending, a large component of which is housing. And when consumers aren't spending, our economy is not growing as much. And consumers are delevering right now. They're paying down debt. Uh, consumers have been levering up for 30 years, and especially in the last you know, 10 or 12 years, and, um, and, and are paying down debt. And that's having a depressing impact on asset values. Well, Texas, you know, its interaction with the economy a couple ways. One is like jobs and, and general economic growth and so forth. And two, Texas issues debt from time to time into the capital markets. And um, we're really in a very friendly interest rate environment right now. Interest rates are extremely low, um, kind of being artificially held low by the Federal Reserve. Uh, one investor uh, characterized it as a, as a hostess Twinkie economy. He said, read the package on a... Uh, of host, uh, read, read a Hostess Twinkies package and you'll find there are no natural ingredients. And so kind of what's driving the economy right now is really a, lo a lot of, you know, what you could call steroids. You've got, you know, Federal Reserve intervening with monetary policy, meaning they're printing money, injecting it into the economy, and that causes uh, asset prices to rise. Uh, you've, everybody's heard about QE1 and QE2, quantitative easing, that's a fancy way of saying print money. And so, um, They've been doing that. We've had stimulus, um, fiscal stimulus from the federal government, you know, the payroll tax holiday, which is putting more money in pockets of consumers to spend. Um, and those things have been impacting the economy. Well, stimulus is coming to an end. Quantitative easing came to an end June 30th. Uh, and, and while everybody swore there would be no third round of quantitative easing, it's now being pretty actively talked about as a potential step in the next leg of trying to soften the impact, basically, of this deleveraging pro process. I heard somebody say double A plus is the new triple A. So I don't think anybody doubts that the United States government is going to be able to meet its debt obligations uh, if there was just some, some issue with the, the, the mechanism by what it get, which it gets done in Washington. I think that was the whole point of the S&P downgrade. But but yeah, so ultimately if, you know, if the benchmark for good credit, which is the, you know, US government debt, you know, gets downgraded, it impacts everything that's indexed to that and case in point some Texas bonds are. Now Texas has a AAA credit rating as a state. And uh, based on the research I have read, Texas have has a less lower reliance on federal dollars that the state does. Uh, than many states like Virginia and Maryland that are adjacent to D.C., have a lot of defense contractors and so forth located there. So Texas was not listed as one of the states that would be downgraded along with the U.S., just kind of in sympathy with the U.S. downgrade. So I think that Texas still has a AAA rating. So uh, 
uh, because of our independence from federal dollars.